are we really waiting for the boomers, the baby boomers, to save the housing market? I believe right now that the housing market is on a brink of a systemic shift, but the so-called silver tsunami may not be the lifetime millennials and Gen Zs are counting on. That's the big question today. I've got some eye-opening insights to share with you. So for decades, baby boomers, they have been the cornerstone of the housing market. That's all I work, that's, that's been my business, working with these baby boomers and shaping it very foundation with their amazing economic prosperity and the widespread home ownership. So with the talk of a boomer getting hitting the housing market and predictions of millions of homes all of a sudden becoming available as boomers age, the idea of a bounce market seems closer than ever. Well, is it? That's why we're here to talk today. But as boomers age and release potentially millions of homes into the market, we have to really ask ourselves, is this the solution we've been waiting for? Or are we about to be blindsided by a wave that falls short of our expectations? Is this silver tsunami really going to change the game? Or are we setting ourselves up for disappointment? The stakes could not be higher. This isn't just about homes. It's about the future of the American dream. So let's take a good look into the reality behind the numbers and what it truly means for these millennials and Gen Z home buyers who want that American dream, just like these baby boomers have. Let's get started. I'm gonna get started with the boomers effect on housing because these boomers are the generation that was born in the post-World War II era. They, they've been more than participants in the housing market. They've been its lifeblood. They came of age during a time of where the economic prosperity was amazing. Affordable housing was plentiful. Uh, mortgages were accessible and even at rock bottom rates. And the American dream of homeownership, it was not just a goal, but it was reality for millions of them. This generation built lives, raising families and planet roots, creating a vast and stable homeowner base that was defined the housing landscape for decades. But now we stand at the front of a significant shift. Is it happening? As boomers enter the retirement years, the conversation has shifted to what happens next? Where am I gonna go? It's many people are moving into retirement communities downsizing or in some cases leaving their homes as they pass on. But the question everyone's been asking is, what will this mean for the housing market, the future of our housing market? Now, Freddie Mac experts, they're forecasting that up to 9 million homes could enter the market over the next decade as boomers transition out of home ownership. But on the surface, this seems like a beacon of hope for millennials and for the Gen Z generations, right? They've been burdened by skyrocketing Gocking house prices, limited inventory, and crushing their and the student debt, so much student debt. So for them, the idea of millions of homes suddenly becoming available feels like the lifeline that they've been waiting for. But a potential solution, is it? Is it a solution to the affordable crisis that has locked so many of these buyers out of the market? But here's a reality check, guys. Is this really going to be a market saver that we hope for? Can we truly count on this silver tsunami to balance out the scales? Or are we pinning our hopes on a scenario that might never fully materialize? The answer isn't as straightforward as it seems because the housing market is really complex, right? And while the influx of homes sounds promising, there are deeper, more nuanced factors at play here that could significantly alter the outcome that we're anticipating. And this promise of 9 million homes hitting the market is enticing, I can say, but it's crucial to dig deeper. And that's what I wanna to do today. Will this potential flood of properties be enough to satisfy the pent up demand? Or is the reality of the situation far more complex with many homes never even reaching that open market? So next, let's take a closer look at the silver tsunami. What does it mean? Because the idea of a silver tsunami sweeping across the housing market is as captivating as it is provocative, okay? Because the term itself conjures images of massive wave ready to unleash and flood of homes into an inventory starved market. It's a narrative that has gained significant traction, especially as the baby boomer generation, which is the largest in US history, enters into their twilight years. Leading the charge in this conversation is a woman, her name is Meredith Whitney. She's a financial analyst with a track record for making bold, very often accurate prediction. I loved her, I follow her all the time. Uh, she's dubbed the Oracle of Wall Street. Whitney, she suggested that 2024 and 25 could mark the beginning of this momental shift. You can check it out on the Wall Street. Listen, according to her, we could see as many as 30 million homes hit the market 
as boomers downsize or transitions into the retirement living. This figure is startling, especially when compared to uh, Freddie Mac's more recent modest estimate of 9 million homes entering the market over the next decade. So what's it gonna be, right? At first glance, uh, Whitney's prediction feels like a game changer. 30 million homes flooding the market could drop dramatically alter the landscape, uh, potentially bring in the balance that buyers have been looking for. So millennials and Gen Z, it really does paint a picture of, of relief, a future where homeownership is within reach, where bidding wars and skyrocketing prices might finally become relics of the past, right? But before we get too caught up in this vision, let's take a step back and scrutinize the details. Because Whitney's forecast, while compelling, it hinges on an assumption of rapid downsizing, a scenario where boomers are, you know, in mass, they go out to decide their, to sell their homes within a very short time frame. Now, it's a bold and aggressive projection, right? One that assumes a significant behavioral shift among the generation known for its attachment to, to home, home ownership. Now, I'm in touch with a lot of these people. They've come to my seminars. They've stayed put and they don't, a lot of them said, I'm not gonna move. So I'm hearing it on both sides because on the other side of the spectrum, we have Freddie Mac's more conservative outlook, 9 million, 30 million. Now, unlike Whitney, Freddie Mac doesn't foresee a tidal wave of homes hitting the market all at once. Instead, they predict a more gradual release spread out over the next decade. Now, this approach takes on account a variety of factors. Let's we'll talk about these factors, which is important. Boomers increase life expectancy longer. They desire to age in place, they stay home. And they find financial stability that many of them enjoy, just staying where they're at, right? It's a slower, steadier trip rather than a deluge of massive tsunami, okay? Let's do a, a reality check, because will it balance the market? Let's talk some numbers. Freddie Mac predicted that the number of boomed owned households will go down from 32 million back in 2022, they predicted, that, predicted this, to 23 million in 2035. Okay, that's 11 million. This projection is where the much discussed figure of 9 million entered the market. That's where we got it from. But here's a critical detail that often gets overlooked. This influx isn't going to happen, happen all of a sudden. This market shifting wave, I don't think so. Instead, I think it's expected to unfold gradually like a slow trickle rather than the tidal surge because I've been talking to my empty nesters who want to sell, but they're taking their time. They're not rushing out. Even with this predicted reduction, boomers remain a formidable force in the housing market. And as of now, they still represent a staggering 38% of all homeowners in the US. 38%, imagine that. So this is not a generation that's eager to part with their homes. I'm telling you, I'm going through a little bit myself, thinking about it, and they just don't want to move. In fact, many boomers, they're choosing to age in place. I've heard that from so many. I think there were 300 in my database that wanted to move, but they want to age in place, a lot of them. It's a growing trend where retirees opt to stay in their family homes rather than downsizing and moving to retirement communities. And with uh, advancements in healthcare, and increasing life expectancies, the trend is only likely to intensify. The silver tsunami that some have been counting on might turn out to be more of a silver drizzle with homes coming onto the market in a far smaller numbers than anticipated. But the reality check is it doesn't stop there because there's another really sobering statistic that puts the whole silver tsunami narrative into perspective. It takes about four deaths to equate into one home being listed for sale. But why is that? Well, because when one partner passes, the surviving spouse often remains in the home, sometimes for years, but no shorter than a year. And when both partners pass on, the property often stays in the family inherited by the children who may choose to keep it rather than sell. This means that a significant portion of the boomer owned homes may not even reach the open market for years, if at all. So before we think about the topic, new wave of buyers, it's time for a bonus tip. Okay, here it is. About 90% of my listing clients, like I said, have been boomers. And 100% of the attendees of the future home seller workshops, they have been boomers. And before the pandemic, out of the 350 boomers that were going to sell their home, about 20 sold per year. And only two did per year from this group in the last few years. So there were supposed to be 80 homes, give or take a few going on the market, and only eight homes come on the market. So does that mean that this year, 72 of these boomers are going to, to all of a sudden take their home selling plunge? Now I've talked to each one and over the last four years, and guess what? 
only four are considering selling. They're saying they want to stay put. Uh, they cannot stay, you know, until they cannot stay there any longer. Okay, they're gonna stay put. So not sure if this boomer get is going to happen this quickly. And that's really boots on the ground information, knowing that I have actual data of people that actually came to my seminar said they were gonna be moving in the last four years and they have it. So that's a big bonus tip right there. So if you're learning something right now, please help a girl out. I'm looking to get to 600 subscribers by the end of the summer. Uh, just hit that subscribe button and on to the next thing. So I wanna talk about the new wave of buyers. Now I've been focused on the potential influx of homes from the boomers, but there's another really critical factor that I think that we can't overlook. It's a new wave of buyers that's ready to enter into market. They're ready. The demand side of this equation is about to surge, and this could have profound implications for the housing landscape. Why? Well, according to projections from the Urban Institute, over the next decade, we can expect 8.5 million new households to form as millennial and Gen Z finally step into the housing market. Well, where are these homes gonna be? Whose homes are gonna be buying? Now, these generations have been waiting in the wings. They've delayed their homeownership due to the financial constraints of student debt or lack of affordable options. But as they reach their prime earning years, the desire of earning a home and the ability to buy a home, it's going to intensify. These people wanna buy. These generations are, are going to need homes. They want a place for the family to grow up like they did. And the demand is expected to rise steadily. And if we're expecting 9 million homes come on the market for the boomers, and also have nearly as many buyers, you can see how this might not exactly balance the market. Because right now we're not balanced at all, right? So next I wanna talk about the real solution. What's the real solution? Is building more homes the real solution? So what is the real solution to this growing housing crisis? So let's cut to the chase here. We need to build more homes. We need more homes, period. The idea of waiting for boomers to pass on their properties is not just impractical. I think it's a, it's a recipe for prolonged market dysfunction. The supply crunch we're facing today, oh, it's terrible. It's not something that can be remedied by simple hoping for a silver tsunami of the homes to crash onto the market. The reality is that we're in a desperate need of proactive, large-scale solutions that go beyond wish wishful thinking, right? We have to acknowledge that the housing market is not going to self-correct. The silver tsunami, even in the most optimistic projections, is only a temporary and partial fix. So we're talking about a problem that's been decades in the making, a shortage of millions of homes that have left entire generations struggling to find a place to call their own. And I see that the only way out of this mess is to tackle the issue head on by dramatically increasing the supply of affordable homes. Now, this stands with local governments. It's time for policymakers to take a hard, unflinching look at those zoning laws that have been they're outdated and over-restricted. It's so hard as a builder right now to even get a permit to build a, a, a community. Let's lighten up, guys. Um, I know in many areas, especially around in, us in Pennsylvania, these laws are such a barrier, a significant barrier to new constructions, particularly for affordable housing. We need more flexible zoning that allows for uh, higher density housing, mixed use developments, and innovative solutions like tiny homes or co-housing communities, something. Land availability is another crucial factor. There's none available. So governments, they need to identify underutilized land and make it easier for developers to build. We're, you know, most needed. We are developers, my family. We're, I grew up in doing custom homes on your lot. It's hard to find a lot unless you subdivide someone's house and then take that lot and build there, unless you wanna move hours away from the city. So as far as land, not about just making it more available. It's also about creating the, the right incentives for builders, right? The construction industry has been slow to recover from the 2008 financial crisis. And with many small builders leaving the market, there's, there's not as many around, right? And we have to revitalize this sector. We need policies that encourage and support construction, especially for affordable homes. This could include uh, tax incentives or grants or low interest loans for developers who are willing to build in these underserved areas. It's very important about that. Or for those who prioritize affordable housing. So Biden or whoever's running the country, Camilla, Kamala, whatever her name is, is the recent proposal of a $10,000 tax credit for homeowners who sell to younger buyers is a step in the right direction. But let's be honest, that's gonna be a drop in the bucket. And I've been saying this for how many times in my videos, you can go back and read that the government needs to help sellers give some kind of credit to move. So the question is, is $10,000 enough? 
I don't know, maybe for some. Uh, well, it's a well-intended measure to do. I don't think it's gonna be enough to drive the kind of significant change that we need. And for many homeowners, especially those sitting on the low mortgage rates or with no mortgage at all, a $10,000 tax credit, I don't think it's a real good compelling reason to sell. The market just needs much more bolder initiatives, uh, ones that tackle the root of the problem rather than just skimming the surface. I think we need to shift our focus from reactive policies to proactive policies that address the underlying causes of housing shortage. This means prioritizing the development of new housing stock, particularly in areas where demand is the highest. It also means investing in infrastructure that supports new developments. Now think public transportation, schools, healthcare facilities. Make new neighborhoods viable. They do, and they make them more attractive. So building communities, think about building a community around these empty areas where you can build in. But most importantly, we need to bring back the trades. The construction of new homes is not just about land and laws. It's about people, it's about such as carpenters or electricians and plumbers and masons. They have the skills to build these homes and for too long their skill trades have been undervalued and leading to shortage of workers. It's another problem we have. Just as demand for new housing is reaching critical levels, we have people short in demand. So we need to invest in training programs, apprenticeships, and initiatives that encourage these young people to pursue careers in the trades without having these workers, even the best laid plans for the new housing will fall short. So in the end, I believe the solution to our housing crisis, it's pretty clear, but it requires action, not just words. We can't afford to sit back now and hope that the market will magically balance itself, right? We need to take bold steps to build more homes and we need to do it now. And the future of homeownership in America depends on it. And if we don't act, we risk leaving an entire generation out in the cold, out of the market and unable to achieve the American dream. We don't want that, do we? But if we do act, if we build, innovate, and invest, there are my three things, we can create a housing market that works for everyone, not just a lucky few, all right? And the time for waiting is over, the time for building has begun. So to conclude, while the idea of millions of homes hitting the market sounds promising, don't bank on it being the magic bullet for housing affordability, right? The future of the market depends on the proactive measures, build more homes, create more opportunities for affordable housing and not just waiting for demographic shifts to save the day, okay? A little bit of everything, something, not just one thing is gonna happen. Because the future of the housing market isn't something to wait for, it's something we must actively shape. Let's be part of the solution. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video for your next dose of real estate reality from Diane Cardano-Casasio.